Jesus. Kibadu zabrandi kapada dababu shabandi bini haba. Mandi bini adabu zonde bini kapadi adabu branda masante bini kapala adabu branda baha. You are worthy, O Lord. Kalibri adabu zonde bini kapa. Randi bini adabu zonde bini kapa branda bada bada adabu zonde bini kapa ya. We bless your holy name, Jesus. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We give you all the adoration. You are worthy, O God. Libra zande bi kapanda brana baba shivi di adabranda baha. Mighty God, glorious one, ancient of days, rock of ages. Lily of the valley, you are the sweet rose of Sharon. Father, I give you praise. God bless you so much tonight, this morning, this midnight hour, for just stopping by. It's a blessing, and I pray that God, by His grace, will bless you. Amen. There is this word that has been burning on my heart uh, since Friday, and I, I, I just can't sleep, but... I want to share it with somebody and I'm believing God that by his grace you will be touched you will be encouraged but before that I want you to just take a few minutes with me and just begin to magnify the name of the Lord just begin to bless him for he is God he is the ancient of days he is the rock of our salvation he is the lily of the valley he is the sweet rose of Sharon there is no God like our God there is no God like our God there is no God that is compared unto our God he is the great I am that I am the omniscient God the God in whom we live move and have our being the God whom we have come to love the God whom we have trusted with all our hearts the God who never never fails the God who would never put us to shame oh awesome God this Midnight hour, I bless your holy name and I give you all the glory. May your name be praised. Father, even as I speak unto your people, I pray that you touch the hearts of them. The entrance of your word giveth light. Let your light shine forth, O Lord, in the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you once again for tuning in. Um, It is incredible what is happening in our society, in the whole world. It is amazing. It is a sad situation, but I want to also open your eyes a bit and, and, and cause you to be aware of the times that we are living in. People of God, things are not going to be butter and bread all the time we are in the end days and we are in the end times and every sign points that we are in the end times therefore i urge each and every one of you to prepare yourself to make sure that your relationship with the lord is intact to make sure that you are living the life that is worthy of god that pleases god should in case he comes that you will be among the people that he takes with them Amen. Now, I want us to turn our Bibles to Psalm 46. I'm reading from the verse number 9 through to 11. Psalm 46 from the verse number 9 through to 11. And this morning, as, as I was thinking and I was, I was dialoguing with God, as, as I was talking to him, he asked me a question and he said, Do you really think that I will just allow my people just to die like that? That's the question he asked me. Do you really think that I do not love my people? That I will allow them just to go through hardship like that? And I was just standing there. And then the Spirit of God just began to speak to me. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That 
everyone that believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. That he was able to sacrifice his life and use his blood as an atonement for you and I. That we would not face condemnation but have life in him and live life here on earth according to a purpose and an assignment that he has for us. So, beloved, be strong and be encouraged that God is with you, even in your homes, wherever you are watching me from, God is with you. God is with you. As long as you have hope in him and you have accepted him as your Lord and personal Savior and you are abiding in him, he will make sure that you are delivered from whatever plague that seems to be plaguing the whole world. Now, my scripture Psalms 46 verse 9 and 11 says, He maketh wars to cease unto the end of the world, uh, unto the end of the earth. Amen. He maketh what? He maketh what? Wars to cease unto the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow and cutteth the spear in sunder. He burneth the chariots in the fire. Verse 10, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted among the heathens. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. What is the psalmist trying to say? Now we know that Psalms written by David in his prophetic encounters and revelation of who God is. This man has encountered God on so many different dimensions. As a lover of God, God gave him a special grace to be able to see the things that we cannot see. And he began to prophesy things about God that blows the mind of people. And in the verse 9, he says, he maketh war to cease unto the ends of the world. Meaning that God is a sovereign power and he is in control of everything that takes place. He is in control of everything that goes on. He make it wars to cease to the ends of the world. That means he has power. He is God, the creator of the universe. Nothing and no one can be compared unto the power unto the magnitude of who our God is. The Bible says he dwells in an unapproachable light, meaning he's God and he's God indeed. Amen. It does not matter what the enemy might bring to you or what you might be facing in your life or what might be going on globally. God can make everything cease. He has power. He is God. Amen. He is God. Now, but this is what he says that be still and know that I am God. Based on the note and the notion, knowing that God is in control of all the affairs of man. God is in control of everything that takes place in this world. God is in control and nobody can, what second God, nobody can be compared unto God. He says, based on this revelation of what God can do, be still. What does it mean to be still? It means, sometimes be still means to stop. Motionless. Alright? Be still. Restrain yourself. Be quiet. In the midst of the turmoil, in the midst of the confusion, in the midst of the chaos, be still. Be calm. Don't allow anything to disturb you. Be at peace. Relax. See, when you know whom you have depended on and whom you have trusted in, nothing moves you. Yes, it is a panic worldwide. People are dying all over the place. Things are happening. And and fear is trying to find its way into the hearts of people, causing them to panic. Some people die out of panic. Some people die out of fear. But he says, be still in all this. Be still. Sit down. Relax. Be still. 
Be at peace. Calm yourself down. Be still. I know that what? I am God. What does it mean to know? To know means to perceive with certainty. To understand clearly. To have a clear and a, a certain perception of truth, fact, or anything that actually exists. So be still and know that I am God. In times like this, for you to be able to be still and to be at peace, you need to have a certain revelation of who God is and what he can do. Without that revelation, without that truth about who God is and what he can do, you will never be able to keep yourself calm. You will never be able to come to the place of trust. So then my question is, who is God? Because he says, be still and know that I, I'm God. Who is God? Who is God? Let me remind you of certain things. The Bible says that there was a time that the people of Israel, they were in what? In slavery. For over 430 years, they have been in slavery. And the time came for God to deliver them. So he sent Moses that go and deliver my people from Egypt. When they went to Egypt and spoke to the Pharaoh, Pharaoh decided that he would not allow them to go. So the Bible says that God allowed there to be what? To be plague in the land of Egypt. Now remember that when the people of Israel, when they, when they went to Egypt, they were given a place called, called Goshen. So where they were living was different from where the Egyptians were. When the nine plagues and the ten plagues hit Egypt, none of it affected the people of Israel in Goshen. That is what God can do. Are you in your spiritual Goshen? Are you in the presence of God? Have you found yourself in the presence of God? People are running for sanitizers, which is good. Be cautious. Physically, take caution. Make sure you do everything that you are supposed to do. But spiritually, where is your state? Whom have you trusted in? Whom have you, de- de- uh, whom have you put your trust in? Whom have you hidden yourself in? In Psalm 91, it says that, it says that he that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in him will I trust. He says, be still and know that I am God. The God there is talking about Elohim. Who is Elohim? The supreme God. Who is Elohim? The supreme God. The ruler and judge of all things. God, the ruler and judge of all things, the supreme God, the ruler and judge of all things. Now, I want us to go to Exodus chapter 18, verse 9 through to 12. He says, And Jethro rejoiced for all the goodness which the Lord had done to Israel, whom he had delivered out of the hand of the Egyptians. And Jethro said, Blessed be the Lord who has delivered you out of the hand of the Egyptians and out of the hand of Pharaoh, who has delivered you from you, who has delivered the people from under the hand of what the Egyptians. Now I know that the Lord is greater than all gods. Jethro is a priest whom Moses served under. But listen to what he's saying. He says, now I know that God is greater than all other gods. So are you trying to tell me that he did not know all this while, that he was greater than all the other gods? This is something for us to think about. Sometimes things happen for God to capitalize on the event, to prove his what? His supremacy to all mankind to all generations, to everything, to everyone. Yes, the set, set, the devil might strike, but God uses the opportunity and turns it around. And at the end of the day, his name is praised. He says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathens. I 
will be praised in all the earth. God is in control. My brother listening to me, God is in control. God is in control. God delivered them from bondage. God is able to deliver you from bondage. Amen. The Bible says that Sarah was barren for years and she couldn't have a son. But when God intervened, she had a son. Be still and know that God is God. Maybe as you are listening to me, coronavirus might not be one of your problems, even though you are here. But then you are desperately praying for a child. You are desperately believing God to give you a child. I am here to tell you, be still and know that he is Elohim. He is the judge of all. He is the supreme God. At the time appointed, he will give you that child that you are looking for. Maybe as you are listening to me, you are looking for healing. You are believing God for him to heal you of some kind of disease. Maybe cancer. Maybe HIV. Maybe a chronic disease like what? Conora virus. Conora, Conora, whatever the, the name is, COVID-19, whatever they call it. You are believing God for something. I am here to tell you that he is a healer. He is a healer. See, before Jesus came on the scene in the earth, no one had been able to open the eyes of a blind man. But one of the signs for us to know that he was the Messiah, it was prophesied that when he steps into town, the eyes of the blind will be opened. And indeed, Jesus was able to open the eyes of a blind man. It had never happened before. The dead had been raised because Elisha raised the dead boy. Does it make sense? But the eyes was never opened. The woman now had the issue of blood. For 12 years, the blood flowed out of her. The Bible says when she encountered Jesus, she was what? She was healed. The woman that was a cha-cha for years in the church, when she encountered God, she was healed. I am here to let you understand that Elohim is in control. Be still and know the God that you are serving. Some trust in chariots, some in horses, but we will remember the name of our God. God is in control. Come on, say it with me, that God is in control. I put my faith and my trust in God, for he is the only one that is able to protect. He is the only one that is able to deliver. He is the only one that is able to secure us. Everybody is, everybody is confused. Governments have tried whatever they can. Doctors have tried whatever they can. And nothing seems to be working. Yes, they are probably working on the scenes right now. And we know that maybe God will grant them wisdom to be able to do it. But for you and I, we know the God that we are serving. We know the God. Maybe you are trusting God for deliverance. There are certain things in your life plaguing you. You are struggling with fornication. You are struggling with masturbation. You are struggling in, in an area of your life and you need God to deliver you. I am here to let you understand that he is a deliverer. Remember the madman that was at Gadara? Legions demons have entered into this man he was not himself but the day he encountered jesus my brother my sister that plague of demonic bondage left him left him left him just like that left him just like that mary magdalene had seven demons in her according to scripture but the bible says when she encountered jesus guess what happened she now was delivered and she became the very first female evangelist that evangelized that jesus had raised has been raised from the dead what is your worry and what is it that you are going through that you think that god cannot help you with you think that god cannot step into it you think that god can cannot deliver you. I am here to cause you to now think about the God that you are serving. He is the God that is able to do anything. He is the Alpha and the Omega. Don't allow the contrary wind that is blowing to cause you to wonder, to cause you to be afraid, to cause you to, to do certain things that does not glorify God. Trust in the God that you are serving. Believe in Him. Believe in Him. Believe in Him that He is able to do exceeding, exceeding, exceeding. It is so sad that in this generation we are not being able to come to the place whereby we will see the hand of God mightily moving in all over the place. I want you to prepare your heart. Prepare your heart. 
There is a scripture in Daniel chapter 11 verse 32 that I love so much. It says, but they that what do know their God, they shall be strong and do what? And do exploits. And this scripture, is a, it's, it's a prophecy of the end times when the Antichrist is revealed. People of God, believers listening to me, this is only the beginning of the things that are about to come. If we can't handle coronavirus, then I don't know how we'll be able to handle the things that are coming. This is biblical prophecy and we need to prepare ourselves by engaging our God, by submitting to our God, by spending time in our God. I'm not preaching fear, but I want you to prepare yourself should in case the Antichrist should appear, you will be ready. People might be saying, well, we'll be raptured by then. What if the rapture is after the tribulation? What are you going to do? What if the rapture is in the middle of tribulation? What are you going to do? The best resolve, the best resolution, the best answer is to make sure that your relationship with God is intact. Do you know this God that you are serving? Do you know him? And if you know him, how well do you know him? Some of us, I was reading something from my friend on WhatsApp and it says, yeah, we have all excuses. Lord, we are going to work. Lord, we are going to school. Lord, we are doing this. Lord, we are doing this. We don't have time for you. Now, schools are closed. Works are closed. There is a shutdown everywhere. Now is the time for you to now cultivate on your relationship with God. Make sure that you utilize the time very well and build a solid relationship with him. If you don't know Jesus and you're listening to me, I pray with you that get your heart and your mind. Open up and accept Jesus into your life. The Jesus that died for you because of his love. He died for you that you will live and have life. And at the end of the day, when he comes, he raptures a bride that is suitable for him. A bride who is holy. A bride who is what? Righteous. A bride who is selfless. A bride who is willing to lay down their life for their husband. A bride that is clean and washed by the word. A bride suitable for the Lord be still and know that I am God in times such as this in times such as this God is looking for someone that will stand with him to declare his word in truth so that his glory will be seen will you be that person will you be that person maybe as I'm speaking to you you don't even have a dollar on you you don't have a dollar on you you don't have supplies in your home your children don't have you don't know how they are going to eat. You don't know how. You don't know how things are gonna happen. You are praying that God will come through for you. Let me tell you, as a living testimony of this thing, let me tell you, God will come through for you. Be still and know that He is God. The Bible says in Judges chapter 15, verse 18 through 19, he says that. Uh, 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 and he was so athirst and called on the Lord and said, Thou hast given this great deliverance into the hands of thy servant, and now shall I die for thirst and fall into the hands of the uncircumcised. And in verse 9 he says, But God clave, clave a hollow place, a hollow place. And that a hollow place that was in the jaw, a hollow place that was in the jaw, and they came water there out, and what? And he had a dr- he had drunk. This is talking about what Samson, after God has used him to kill over thousands of what of the Philistines with a jaw bowl. This guy was so tired, he needed water to drink. There was no water around. But guess what? Because of Elohim, eh? Elohim. He caused water to come out of the ground. And this guy drank. God is able to cause water to come out of what? Of of the rock for his people to drink. There are people that make declarations that God does not cause manna to fall from heaven anymore. Yes, maybe physically. Maybe now he has not done it before. But let me tell you something. He is supreme. If he has done it before, he can do it again. Don't let nobody tell you that God cannot cause manna to fall down from heaven. How do you know God cannot cause manna to fall down from heaven? 
How do you know? You tell me. The Bible says it's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is able to do it. Maybe he has not done it, but God can cause someone to give to you. That is manna from heaven. God can cause somebody to buy groceries and bring it to your doorstep and say, the Lord told me to bring it to you. That is manna from heaven. Because to you, what is this? I'm not expecting it, but God is able to do it. God can cause someone to give you money out of nowhere and that you are, you are, you are, you are a dying need for and you don't know where it's going to come from. That is manna. Don't let nobody deceive you. God is still God in the throne. He's the same yesterday, today and forever. Our secret place is our place of protection. Our secret place is our place of dominion. Our secret place is our place of protection, people of God. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I want to believe that tonight you are blessed. I'm not taking too much of your time. I'll put end my message here and I pray with you that God, that God, God that is able to protect, he will protect you and mark you with the blood of Jesus. On the final, final, final place, the Lord instructed the people of Israel, kill a lamb, mark your doorpost with the blood. I am going to come through. The angel of death is going to come through. And as it comes through and sees the blood, he will pass you over. But those that don't have that revelation, they will die. And those were the people of the Israelites. If you are close to God and intimate with God, he will give you a revelation of what to do for you to be saved. But those that don't know God, they lack understanding. So therefore, whatever happens, it will happen to them. You know God. You know God. You know God. That blood that I am talking about is the blood of Jesus. There is power in the blood. Just take a minute. Take a minute and open your mouth and say, Father, I plead the blood of Jesus. If you have family in Italy, plead the blood over them. If you have family in Ghana, plead the blood over them. If you have family in any country, Indonesia, Croatia, whatever, just plead the blood of the Father. I plead the blood of Jesus. I mark them with the blood. I, as a priest in the house, I enter into priesthood right now and I declare that no evil will be for them. No evil will come near their dwelling. No evil will come near my dwelling. I declare it in the name of Jesus. Now, I want you to open your mouth and say, Father, I thank you that you are Elohim. You are supreme. You are my judge. You are my deliverer. You are my protector. And God, I enter into that secret place right now. In the name of Jesus. And if you don't know the Lord Jesus, say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the son of the living God. I believe that you came to die for me. I open my heart and I accept you. Come and dwell in my life. Make things anew. I submit unto you, O Lord. Use me for your glory. God bless you. You have been saved and you have been delivered. May God bless you and may God protect you. Until next time, I will come with you. I will come to you with the word of the Lord. May you be empowered and be still, knowing that God is still God and he will never fail. God bless you. Bye-bye.